I'm gonna show you how to create and share Meshtastic channels with other people, whether you're on iPhone, Android, or using the web client. And I'll show you how to synchronize channels among your own devices. That way you can create your own private encrypted communications network. All right, so let's start with iPhone. I'm gonna assume you have a radio connected to the Meshtastic app. We're just gonna to go to settings and under radio configuration, you'll see channels. So by default, every Meshtastic radio is going to have the public channel settings configured in the primary channel index, which is index zero. So you can have up to eight channel settings saved on a node and they're all indexed. So it starts at index zero. So if we tap on that, really the unique thing that makes up a channel is the name and the key. So channels aren't actually different frequencies. You know, you would expect maybe to see like a frequency setting here or something. It's actually more appropriate to think of a channel as an encryption group. So every message that gets communicated over the Meshtastic network is encrypted. And in order to be able to read the data that's transmitted, whether it's a text message that you're sending in the messages panel right here, or if it's telemetry that is uh, being broadcast automatically, it all has to happen through a channel encryption. So let's go ahead and change this primary channel to a custom channel. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to set up the public channel on a secondary slot. And there's a specific reason we're doing it this way, which I'll explain later. So for the name, I'll just type in alpha. You can put in whatever you want and we need to change the key size to 256 bit and it'll automatically generate a key for us if we want to choose a different key we can just tap this lock icon over here it'll regenerate a new key now we don't have to memorize this key it, there's an easy way for you to be able to share this key with other people which i'll show you in a little bit now by the way the position settings down here can be custom per user however the channel name and the channel key need to be identical among all nodes that wanna communicate using these channel settings. So every user can decide whether or not they want to share their position and they can choose whether they want to share a precise location or not. Now you might notice on the public channel, you don't have the ability to share a precise location. That's just for security purposes. But when you have a private channel, you can uh, choose whether you want a precise location or not. And MQTT, we're not gonna worry about. That's for basically bridging and linking uh, through the internet. And so we can just tap save and that'll save our custom settings to the primary channel index zero. Now by saving a custom channel to the primary slot, we've actually technically changed the operating frequency of our radio. And that means we're actually operating on a different mesh now. So you might be confused because I literally just said that channels don't actually change the frequency. And I stand by that. So let me explain here. If we go back to the settings and go to the LoRa settings, there's a number of things here that you should understand. So first of all is the region. So when you first set up your radio, you set a region. That's gonna define the broad operating frequency um, that your radio will be allowed to transmit on. And so that's just to basically make sure that you're not accidentally transmitting on a frequency that is restricted, requires a license or something like that. So in the US, when you tap US for the region, you're gonna be on the 915 megahertz ISM band, which is free to use without a license. And that actually operates, that range is actually between 902 megahertz and 928 megahertz. Now, LoRa actually doesn't need that entire range to communicate, it actually only needs a small sliver of that. So LoRa is the radio technology that Meshtastic is built upon. It stands for long range. So it's, it's a long range communication protocol that operates with really low power. So it's perfect for this sort of application. And so Meshtastic has bundled together a number of presets that configure a few different LoRa settings, one of them being the bandwidth. So the default preset, which is long fast, long range fast, has a bandwidth of 250 kilohertz. And so if you take the 915 frequency band and divide it up into 250 kilohertz chunks, 
you get 104 possible frequency slots that you can tune your radio to. So that's what this setting is right here, the frequency slot. Now, I said that by changing the primary channel name, we've changed the frequency, and that's because by default, your frequency slot is set to zero. So if you read this note here, it tells you that when you have the frequency slot set to zero, it uses the primary channel name to automatically calculate a frequency slot to operate on. So when you have the default public channel in the primary channel index, the frequency slot gets calculated to 20. Now there's a whole frequency slot calculator available on the Meshtastic website if you're curious. Um, interestingly, the EU only has one frequency slot available because their um, unlicensed frequency band is very narrow, so there's only one slot available. But if we go back to the US and we switch to something like short turbo, it uses a different bandwidth that divides up into 52 frequency slots. And so if you pick the modem preset in the region, it'll tell you what the default frequency slot is. So if we wanna add the public channel to a secondary slot, we need to manually override the frequency slot to 20. Um, this will also enable us to communicate and hop messages on that popular default mesh. So by changing your frequency slot, you're technically operating on a different mesh. So that's what makes up the mesh is all radios that have identical region, preset, and frequency slot. So if you want other nodes to be able to hop your messages for you, even if they don't have your private channel settings, um, as long as they have the same region, preset, and frequency slot, and if they have hops enabled, which most do by default, you need to make sure that uh, that you override that frequency slot to the default frequency slot. So we're gonna tap save in order to save those settings to our radio. It'll do an automatic reboot. All right, so if we go to messages, we have our custom alpha channel. Let's go ahead and add that public channel back as a secondary channel slot. So we'll go to channels. I'll tap add channel this time and we need to leave the channel name blank. So the default public channel name needs to be blank. Now you might have seen some conflicting information about it, like it needs to be long fast or um, say something like primary. Trust me, it's confusing, but just leave this blank. It's gonna automatically display a name for us, um, which again is kind of confusing, but just leave this field empty. Then we're gonna go to the key size and choose default and it'll automatically put in the AQ equal equal for the key. So that's the public key uh, for the public channel is AQ equal equal. So it's built in, just tap default and you'll be all set. Now you can choose whether or not you wanna share your position on the public channel. And again, it doesn't let you show a precise location on the public channel. So if you're ever playing with these settings and you're like, oh, it's not letting me show a precise location, you're probably not realizing that you're editing the public channel and not your private channel. So uh, we're gonna save this and channel settings don't need a reboot with the radio. So that happens pretty quick. And again, see it shows as channel one, but if I go back to the settings, it's, it's blank. So it's going to show, and actually if you think about it previously, when we had it in slot zero, it displayed as primary, even though it was blank, right? Android actually shows something completely different, which I will show you. All right, so how do we share these channels with another radio? So I'm gonna tap settings to go back. There's a share QR code link right on this page, and this will generate a QR code that will, uh, when scanned, will open up the Meshtastic app on that device and prompt to add or replace these channels. So you can decide whether you want to share all of the channels or just one or two, how, however you want. You can also choose whether you wanna replace all the channels or just add the channels. I'm gonna do replace. And this button right here will let you share a URL if you wanna text it to someone. So if you're not in the immediate vicinity of someone, you wanna text them. Uh, this link, they can open the link right from their phone and it'll do the same thing. It'll open the Meshtastic app and prompt to add the channels. So I've got an Android device here paired to this radio here. It's got the default long fast. Um, so Android shows it as long fast. It's the default public channel. 
So it's basically what you would get with any default radio that you order, any Meshtastic radio that you order. So I'm just gonna open up the camera app on the phone and scan the QR code. So it shows a prompt here to go to that URL. And when I tap it, it opens up Meshtastic automatically and gives us this screen to uh, add the channels. So you do have some control over whether or not you want to include the channels that were you know, in that URL, in that QR code. So if I wanted to, I could disable that check mark and it would just bring in the alpha channel. Or if I just wanted to add versus replace, I could do that as well. I'm gonna do it just like this and tap accept. And so we have the custom alpha channel in the index zero and the public channel on index one. So again, Android shows it as long fast, but if we go into the settings and channels, if I tap on that long fast and tap in the channel name, it's actually empty. But when you go out of there, it automatically populates as long fast. So I find that a little confusing. Again, if you type in long fast here, it actually won't be the public channel. So just leave it blank. It'll automatically fill that in and you'll be good to go. When you share channels through the QR code or URL, it'll also make sure that the all of the LoRa settings get transferred with it. So if we look at the top right here, we can see that we're now on slot 20. Android shows that up here, which is kind of nice, but we can verify that by going to the LoRa settings, scroll down, and we can see the frequency slot got changed to 20 as well, and we're on long fast, we're in the United States. So that's important to understand. In order to communicate on a channel, all nodes need to have those identical LoRa settings, the preset, the region, and the frequency slot. Now, why do I recommend moving the public channel to a secondary channel index versus just leaving it on the primary and adding a custom channel to the secondary? So the primary channel index is special because it's the only channel that will transmit automated telemetry packets. So GPS positioning is one, although they did recently add a feature that allows you to send automated uh, location over a secondary slot, but I still think it's worth having the primary channel um, set up as your custom channel because there's also just node information, node telemetry. If you're using any sensor modules, detection module, PAX counter, all of those additional kind of add-on modules that will send automated messages behind the scenes all occur on whatever channel you have configured in the primary slot. So that's why I recommend using that primary slot with a custom channel. Now you can also interface with your Meshtastic radio on a computer right through a browser. So one way to do it is with USB cable. So just plug in your radio to your computer, then go to client.meshtastic.org and you'll see the screen. Tap new connection. We're gonna go to serial. If you've previously connected, you'd see this button right here that you'd click. Otherwise, tap new device. You're gonna select the device as it appears um, on this screen here. If you don't know which one it is, you can just unplug the device, see which one disappears, and then plug it back in. And when it pops up, you can go ahead and click it, click connect, and then you click the button and you're good to go here. So on this node, I already have an alpha channel configured. If I wanted to share this with someone else, we would go to config and then click channel config. And so these are all the different channel slots up top here that enable you to save different channel settings, which again, think of them as encryption groups. So if I wanted to share this channel, I would go ahead and click export, and you're gonna see that similar interface uh, to configure the QR code. And you can copy and paste this URL as well. I don't know why the cursor changes like that, but you can still copy it. And in order to import channels, um, you're not gonna like paste that URL up here. You actually wanna go to this import button and then you would paste that URL up here. So the web interface gives you the choice to import the LoRa configuration or not. This is kind of required. You're not gonna be able to communicate as intended um, on any particular channel um, unless you have matching LoRa configuration. So you're kind of you're gonna kind of want to do that. Um, it also lets you pick which channel index 
you want to save that channel to. So that's that's kind of cool. So for instance, if I go to channel one and click apply, those, those settings are uh, right here. So this is how I would do it if I had a bunch of nodes that I wanted to um, synchronize channels among. I would just do it on the computer. I think it'll be a little faster than having to uh, do the Bluetooth connection every single time. You can just have that URL on your clipboard, you connect it to the browser, and you go to import and synchronize those channels. Now there is another method that I have used using the Meshtastic API, the Python API, where you can save basically a configuration file. It's uh, called a YAML, Y-A-M-L, it's essentially like a text document that's formatted a certain way. And you can basically paste in a single command to uh, import and apply settings that are saved in the YAML file to a node that's connected. So you're still connecting it to the computer, but um, you're not having to interface with a interface. Um, you're kind of just typing in a command and letting it fly. Now I've gone even further than that um, with Atlavox because we flash a lot of radios for you know every order that comes in. So I've actually developed some custom software that'll do it automatically based on you know which modules you ordered with your radio and um, just kind of el eliminates a lot of the opportunity for human error. So if you want me to do a tutorial on doing the Meshtastic API approach, um, I, I would, I'd love to do that if, if you're interested, just leave a comment below and, um, it's a little more advanced. I don't want to get into it in this video, but, um, all right. Yeah. So thanks for watching and, uh, I'll see you in the next video.